Oh, it's, it's time, time ladies and gentlemen. It's time. Time to make a moment with your video. Outstanding punk rock superstar, airborne paratrooper, tugboat trash extraordinaire, and provider of authentic malt liquor and Valentine Ale Massacre Entertainment on YouTube, the Oak Town Hellbilly, aka Mr. Med 40 ounce back here. Another Mike Old English 800 malt liquor, West Coast, straight off the dangerous streets of Stockton, California. In order for me to bring you this high quality, authentic malt liquor entertainment production tonight. You cannot stop it, it hasn't even Outstanding. Live TV, folks, it does happen. The crack of that can goes out to Lone Wolf 420, who put out yet another masterpiece this week. Shout out to Lone Wolf 420, a member of the Northern California contingent. Moller label out, follow blueprint. You looked away. You asked for delicious. This. I gotta tell you, that's delicious. You made your bed. Now, I get it. Uh, now tonight. I'm gonna go on, I guess, a rant. There's not gonna be a bunch of yelling and shit, none of that. It's not gonna be like the old days. Although I do have a couple of those planned for a few weeks from now, you can count on it. If shit keeps getting any worse around here. But uh, like I said on this channel, all are welcome here. I've said it before. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not political on here. I don't fucking give a shit how you vote, who you vote, doesn't fucking matter. If you one way, vote one way or the other way, I don't give a fuck about that shit. I'm like an anarchist over here, I don't care. <clears throat> but I will tell you what I don't, what I will not stand for. I will not tolerate censorship, political correctness, or prohibition. Censorship, political correctness, and prohibition is for suckers. If you're offended by any word in any language, your fucking parents were not fit to raise children. And that's a fact, Jack. More liquor label out. Shout out to 209J Jones. Brown bag, 40 ounce. Rock bottom, 559. Of course, Lone Wolf 420, I already mentioned him. Ball staff, of course. I was watching the Met game. I was going to came up earlier this afternoon, but I started watching baseball. I was watching the fucking, the Indians beat the fucking Tampa Bay Rays. <laughs> Fuck you, glitch, small liquor. But uh, that was a good ball game. That came down from like seven runs or whatever. And then the fucking Met game came on. So I'm, I've been watching the Met game. The Mets are up now. It's in the fucking eighth inning. They're up seven to, what, seven to two, I think it was. And uh, after this masterpiece is over, I'll get back to that. Hopefully the sh St. Louis shitbirds will get fucking knocked out tonight too. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about tonight, let's get into this. This might be a little bit of a long one, even though it's a 24 ounce can, I got, I got a bit to discuss and talk about. We'll do a bunch of shout outs and everything. Molt Patriot, Indiana Molt, of course. Hell to pay 80, Nick Gutted, you know. Uh, we'll even go with I Hate Bud Light. From the days of way back. Chili Palmer. Okay. I got some fucking pet peeves when it comes to vinyl records and record companies that seem to be, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking about or what they're doing. The whole point of your record company is you want to fucking make money. You want to be able to make a, make a living and get this fucking, get your product out there to market, right? Oh, well, Mr. Med Punk, right? Yeah, okay. Well, you still got to, somebody's still got to get paid for their work. That's how it works. And you've got a whole fucking generation of people now, younger people, that are not getting to experience, that they're, they're into vinyl, that are not getting to experience firsthand those fucking great punk bands from the 70s, 80s, 90s. <laughs> Actually, punk band releases. I mean, you're talking legacy band, whatever. That's, well, that's another, another topic for another masterpiece. And they're not able to fucking experience what's going on, what we, what we, got, we were able to listen to. Now, I had CDs in the 90s or whatever, in 2000s, but uh, now I'm collecting vinyl. And some of this stuff is proving very difficult to get. We'll get into all that in a moment, more liquor. Uh, my, next, my next thing. Shout out to my girl, <clears throat> T-Money916. What a fucking hot piece of ass she is. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like for her, if you would like for her to appear in one of my Molt Liquor masterpieces in the future, Drop a fucking comment down below. I just realized I forgot something. Live TV, folks, it does happen. Yep. Got to get right. Got to get right, ladies and gentlemen. See, if I had her with me, she would help me correct all that shit. Anyways, more liquor. Let's set the tone. Got some talking to do. <clears throat> Life to you. Study the label. Go with that. OK, 
Okay. I'm on Discogs. I'm looking around, and there are a few bands that I intend to collect their entire discography on vinyl. Everything I can get my hands on, with some, some exceptions, of course. I'm talking about Agnostic Front, the United Blood EP. An OG pressing of that is ridiculously expensive. They rarely press that. I wish they would fucking do another pressing where you could get, like, where they could get it out there. It's, it deserves to be out there. It's a fucking masterpiece, especially on that, that crimson vinyl. The originals were on black vinyl, but they did a, I, I think the second pressing was on crimson red vinyl. It's fucking sick. It's badass. That record needs to be fucking, that 7-inch needs to be put out there to market. An original OG pressing of that is like fucking 5,000 fucking dollars. It's ridiculous. I'm not paying that shit. That's fucking out of control. I couldn't afford it anyway. More liquor. I'm just fucking tugboat trash. So, I did spend, I splurged on this one. Agnostic Front, Victim in Pain, 1984. This is the, uh, this is the 2021 uh, pressing. Maybe 2022. But Roger Moret, the singer for AF, he's got, he had fucking cancer. So his medical bills were piling up. So they put out some merchandise like that. I paid 79 bucks for that record. I gladly paid it because the, the proceeds from that, all the profits they made for it went to his GoFundMe or whatever for his, for his, uh, his medical bills from his cancer. Fuck cancer. I think he, he licked it. It's in remission or whatever. I just saw them in uh, Oakland a few weeks ago. It's fucking <laughs> phenomenal. I talked about that shit last week. You know, but uh, like AF said a long time ago, United and Strong. That's a masterpiece. An OG copy of that is like $200. I'm not paying it. This particular one, they pressed 79 of them. And I was, I was lucky enough to get one because I saw the Instagram post and it was maybe a minute and a half old. I went immediately went to the website and I bought it on the spot. Had to. Because I went quick. I went, and, I went and refreshed the page like a couple of minutes later when they were all gone. They were gone within minutes. And I was lucky, lucky enough to get one. That should be repressed as well. I'd buy another copy of it. I do spin that record. I listen to it. Of course I do. The other band that I want to fucking collect their, the entirety of their discography on vinyl is U.S. Bombs. One of, uh, easily within my top five, number one is Black Flag, number two is probably AF, number three is The Business, number four is U.S. Bombs. It's right up in there and, and rounding out the top five would be The Casualties. <clears throat> Shout out to Lil J, by the way. And also, Lil J, uh, Snapcase is getting ready to play a show in your hometown in Buffalo. I'm wanting to say next Saturday, you should fucking go check them out. That's some fucking 1990s hardcore, upstate New York hardcore that you can really fucking get down to. It's a, they're a great band. Lyrically, it's fucking phenomenally good. Musically, phenomenally good. And you can understand most of the words, Moldicker. Shout out to an IJ Jones, Moldicker referee. Now... <clears throat> U.S. Bombs, Lost in America, the live album, compilation album for 2001. I found this one relatively easy. Bomb Records still had new old stock in their warehouse. They had a couple cases of it. I think I paid... I got this at Headline Records in Los Angeles, and I, I'm wanting to say I think I paid like 24 bucks for it. You know, now, they're all out of them. They're not, there's no, no new... It was, a, it was a brand new sealed copy. There's no new sealed copies floating around, so you're going to pay for this if you can find one. That's not on the Hellcat Epitaph record label. Now, we'll get into all that in a moment. This one here, never mind the open mines. Here's the U.S. bombs. I had to get this from Europe. I paid, I paid a bit for it, but like I said, I'm, I'm wanting to collect the entirety of their discography. It's a pain in the fucking ass. This shit's out of print. Alive Records, I think, went out of business 15 years ago. You know, and uh, it is what it is. This is a masterpiece. This is a great album. It came out in 1996. It's their second album, I want to say. And what else do I have here? Oh, of course. And we're gonna get into the Hellcat Epitaph shit in a moment. This was the first record that I bought off of Discogs. U.S. Bombs put strength in the final blow. There are no copies available on there right now. If there are, they're coming from Europe and Japan. I managed to find a U.S. seller that had this. It's immaculate. It was in excellent condition. I don't think it's been played more than 10 times. It's more than that now, but when I got it, it was probably less than 10 times. This is from 1994. This is the debut album from U.S. Bombs. A masterpiece. There ain't a bad song. All these records with Dwayne Peters, there ain't a bad fucking song on there. Not a single one. Which brings me to my next point. We'll get some more of this mold liquor down. Mold liquor. Uh, 
I have, hold on. On social media, on Twitter and on Instagram, I have repeatedly, you know, tried getting that uh, Tim Armstrong, Lars Fredrickson, Epitaph Records and Hellcat Records. This is very important. This is a band that the shit that they fucking said in the 1990s and the 2000s is still fucking relevant now. There ain't a bad song that they ever put out with the exception of one or two that I can think of. U.S. Bombs War Birth, 1997. This is the first one they put out on, uh, on Hellcat Epitaph Records. I had to pay out the ass for this one. This is an OG pressing. Every one of my U.S. Bombs records are OG pressings, with the exception of Put Strength in the Final Blow. That's the 1999 repressing. War Birth, U.S. Bombs War Birth. Look at the fuck, look at this shit. I had to get this one from Japan. With the shipping and everything, it was like 50 bucks. I hate paying 50 bucks for a record. I hate it. I should have been able to go into fucking one, two, three, four, go or Econo Jam and picked up a fresh copy of that that's just been pressed. All right, the second one that they put out on, on Epitaph, U.S. Bombs, The World, 1999. A certified masterpiece, not a bad song on here. My favorite song on here being uh, 70s, 60s, uh, probably New Approach, Billy Club, Skater Dater is fucking badass. Dwayne Peters is a professional skateboarder uh, too, by the way. <clears throat> but this, this one right here, I got from a U.S. seller, and I think this one was only like 25 or 30 bucks plus shipping, so it was like 35 bucks total. Not bad, I got lucky. These are fucking impossible to find almost. Go look on Discogs and see what you can fucking find for it, can't. And of course, they're 2001 U.S. Bombs back at the laundromat, another masterpiece. This one came out in 2001, I was, in, I was deployed to Kosovo at the time. And I had never gotten a chance to see the U.S. Bombs when I was living in Germany. Around that time, 2000, 2001, he had another band called Dwayne Peters and the Huns. And they used to come to Germany fucking, and Europe every fucking, like, seemed like every six months. Every motherfucking time they came near where I was, I was stationed at in Baumholder, they'd either come to Trier, sometimes, a lot of times they came to Schweinfurt to the Altstadtbahnhof. But that would be during the week and shit, and then the fucking, the other times they came to Trier, we were either deployed around the fucking field training. And it sucks. So I never got a chance to see him until 2019 in Sacramento. More liquor. I also have the new album Road Case. It's fucking, it's in here somewhere. I'd have to take it out. <laughs> Getting to be a lot of records now. I got 168 records. But the other thing with that, Tim Armstrong, I think they got a beef with Dwayne about some fucking stupid thing or another. He's an artist. He's probably difficult to fucking deal with. That's how it goes. But that, that, that catalog needs to be repressed, it does. It needs to be repressed and put out so the younger generation can enjoy it. We used to go to Trier to go to punk rock shows and shit, we get fucking destroyed over there. Go fucking slam dance for like a fucking two hours or whatever. Go <laughs> try to go get into the Megadrome. Eight times out of 10, they wouldn't let us in there, but sometimes they would. You know, I got, I got friendly with one of the, uh, the fucking bouncers at the door, I was like, hey, he goes, you must go around the back and use the back door. I will open it for you. And no problem. So we'd be all sweaty and fucking grimy and shit going to the fucking, going to the Megadrome afterwards. But a lot of times we'd end up in the uh, the Irish pub in downtown Trier, Murphy's Irish pub near the fucking Porta Negra. I don't know if that place is still there. Probably. It's been there fucking 100 years. Later. One time we ended up in the fucking, my buddy was driving and he was straight edge. He didn't drink. So he's like, you guys can get fu as fucked up as you want. I'll fucking drive us because I want to go get a piece of ass afterwards. We're going to Frankfurt after the show. You all up for it? I was like, fuck yeah, who ain't? Who? who? <laughs> you want to go get a piece of ass? Fuck yeah, who don't? More liquor. Uh, speaking of that, don't forget to leave a comment down below. We're, we're getting ready to approach the fucking swill. Uh, not quite there yet, a little bit more. Hopefully the Mets are still winning. They were up 7-2. We'll see what happens. It's the Mets. Like full staff, I'm telling you. They find ways to fucking lose that are amazing. That's why they're called the Amazing Mets. That's what Casey Stengel said in 1970. <clears throat> he wasn't the manager anymore, but he said they find ways to... Or, uh, excuse me, 1965. 
they find ways to lose that I haven't even figured out yet, or something like that. They're amazing. They're amazing that sport liquor. Uh. Toronto's got knocked out too, by the way. <clears throat> Shout out to Ronnie Boy Moltz. And the roommate, of course. All right, let's uh, let's go. Dwayne Peters. Hold on a second. <laughs> Got to get right. Live TV, folks, it does happen. Forgive me, for I have sinned. Approaching the swill. Some people call it the swill. I call it the best fucking part of the whole goddamn thing. Approaching the motherfucking swill. U.S. bombs. Take us the fuck out of here. We gotta listen to an ad, of course. The whole fucking thing. Fuck you, YouTube, for doing that. Fucking scumbags, I should have used my iTunes. Ah. There we go. Motherfucker. Live TV, folks, it does happen. I cuss a bit, that's the way it goes. Shout out to my girl T Money 916 if you wanted to appear in a Molt Liquor Masterpiece. Drop it down in the fucking comments down below. Stay tuned, Punk Rock and Molt Liquor coming right up. Shout out to Fuckles 1. I'm the fuck out of here.